everyone. My name is Sam. And I'm Jacob. And welcome to Geeking Out About It. Geeking Out About It is a pop culture talk show covering everything from James Bond to Star Wars. On this show, we will be giving you a tour of some of our favorite parts of being nerds. And we'll be helping give you some stepping stones to some cool things you might not be aware of. Sometimes that means having a little fun. This year, we have a wide range of topics we will be discussing. And we have a wide range of ways that we are going to tell you about it. One could say that we're going to be geeking out about it. And after that terrible joke, let's talk about our first topic. So to kick off the series, we wanted to start with Firefly. Firefly is a sci-fi western taking place in a small but rich universe. The show itself only lasted one season, but it is still a beloved piece of nerd culture. The general concept of Firefly follows a small crew in their journey in the verse. Now, what makes it so fun is that all the main characters have some pretty interesting flaws. Although the series was cut short after just one season, it went on to earn its own movie to conclude the series. We felt that Firefly was the perfect choice to start off the year, so when we come back, let's dive into it. Well, audio, man, it's, it's in the air. It's the fluctuations that uh, vibrate our ear holes and make the cochlea sensitive, you know? Um, I just, you can't ignore it, and you try to start measuring it, and it just pulls you in. Well, I used to try to play music on my own, make the sounds for my own hands and instruments. Then I started recording. Upon hearing myself in my recordings, I decided I should just record. When you're a young adult who is serious about pursuing media as a career or even a side hustle, a lot of people won't take you seriously. OMN is cool because not only will they take you seriously, they'll push you and they'll give you all the tools to really try to do something special with it and let you be creative about it. And so that's what's been special about OMN to me. I'm Sam Lay and I'm a student engineer at Orange Media Network. Located on your airwaves, outside your classrooms, and on the fourth floor of the Student Experience Center, Orange Media Network is home to Oregon State University's national award-winning student media organization. Hundreds of OSU students from all majors and experience levels create content and make content decisions for seven media platforms including a newspaper, three magazines, a radio station, a TV station, and online. OMN students strive to change the world by elevating diverse student voices, challenging views, and empowering the community to build a better world. Welcome back. Now, before we dive into the show, I wanted to establish a few things to help everyone understand why this show was so successful. One would think that it couldn't be that good because it got canceled after only one season. Well, in the end, that's the reason why it was so good. It didn't have enough time to disappoint the viewers, and it was cut short and avoided the treatment that Heroes got when it slowly declined and disappointed everyone. Another fun point is that Firefly ended up getting canceled, and it originally aired on one of the lowest volume TV slots available, leading to terrible ratings and poor engagement. This meant that the series was canceled after only nine episodes aired, ending Firefly before the first season was even complete. So, eh. Luckily, due to the cult following it developed later, we got to see the final three missing episodes in the Firefly box set. I agree with Sam, the show's main hitting point was its tightly knit story. It left you wanting to see more and more, which created a large fan base. Personally, I would have loved to see more, but who's to say it would have been good? There are plenty of times when a show gets a reboot or they snag another season after a fantastic first, and it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. That's exactly what I'm talking about with Heroes. See, Heroes had a very good first season, and when I watched it way back when as a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So then when I started up the second season, I had super high expectations to see the reveal of the cliffhanger that they had at the end of the first season. 
And I can firmly say that I think this is the most disappointed that I have ever been. It was a shame how it turned out. And Firefly didn't have that. True, but as much of its lifespan played a major role in its success, Firefly has another unique benefit. It's a small universe. The universe of Firefly is an interesting one. It's not as big and flashy as the ones of Star Wars or Star Trek, but it holds its own. Firefly sets a different tone, a far darker and mushed up tone. You see, in Firefly, everything's a little twisted. Our heroes aren't all good, and the bad guys aren't all wrong. Everybody's just trying to make a living somehow, and sometimes there are no sides. The verse is really interesting, too. There's a lot of different types of things that go into it, and it takes place in a thoroughly used universe. Everything in it is a little bit grummy, a little bit messed up, and it's worn. It's dirty. It's not, it's not well put together like shows like Star Trek, you know, how it's all clean. Everything's like a nice white surface. Everything's clean. And it, it wears its grunge with some pride, you know? And I think that's one of like the strongest points about the show is that we have this kind of concept. We have never really seen this Western mix with sci-fi before. And there are whole like, scenes where you just see wild herds of Mustangs flying with like a spaceship flying over them. Like that's not a sci-fi trait. That's dirty. It's grungy. Like the ship is dilapidated in, mm -hmm. in certain cases and it's, it's falling apart. There's, there's just, it's real. Yeah. You know, they take this concept and they make it real. Yeah, another real aspect of it is that Firefly takes place in a universe where the Earth has run out of resources, forcing humanity to find a new home. Humanity decided to flee and go into the stars and found a sizable portion of new planets in a dense star cluster. Well, they had a lot of moons and they decided, you know what, let's just terraform all these bad boys. So they did, and they settled a newly christened verse. It's called a verse. Yeah, and I think this verse is like, really cool because in a lot of these like in the Star Wars universe for example it is massive like oh. there is no way to yeah. comprehend just how big this is oh, yeah. but in Firefly there is no faster than light space travel mm -hmm. they they have their burners and these fast jets but there is no like galaxies beyond all of this is set in one system from what we can tell from kind of the the background knowledge of the tv show and the movie like that's that's what we've got we've got this one system and things move slow too you know the, the due to the population and resource density of the central planets that are in there uh, there's a, a kind of a small little section but you see that they're a lot wealthier than the outlying planets and they decided to form a centralized unified government now, this government decided its responsibility was to expand its power and protect everyone in the galaxy. Now, you can imagine this, this probably didn't go over well with the border planets, so they resisted, and it resulted in a devastating civil war. But the stronger planets ended up winning, unifying the whole verse under their rule. And I think, you know, that's where we really get the start of this story with Malcolm, right? Because he was originally a brown coat, he was fighting for this. And then there's this change in character after some events happen in the TV series, the, the pilot, like the first 30 minutes of that pilot kind of explain like why he's made this change of heart and gathered this ragtag team of yeah. people to help him run his ship, the Serenity. Yeah, and that's kind of where this show kind of comes in. It's a result of the unification of that universe that closely resembles a post-Civil War South. Now, there's sparse rule everywhere in the outlanding regions, and that's kind of where the fun of the show is. Uh, there's kind of just crime a little bit around there, and our, our characters aren't the best of people, so they're pretty fun to talk about. Now, this pretty interesting uh, piece of the world is that you explore with the characters, and you see through the character's lens, and that is where the show really picks up. True, and I think one of the great parts is that when they're traveling from destination to destination, there's a real-time travel. It's not just this instantaneous boost and boom, they're at the other planet. It takes actual time of the show where they show the transportation of these characters, and that's where we start picking up these character nuances, where these events happen in close proximity that define who the characters are. Mm -hmm. And I think that really ties into Joss Whedon's main point, or one of his main points of the show is he wanted to break sci-fi tropes yeah. and stereotypes and create something that was kind of new and different. And I think it does that really well with the way the characters interact with each other and the fact that it's a dirty, grungy verse. 
it's not clean and pretty. Like there's still crime and there are still bad people. Right? Yeah. I mean, it, it creates this fluidity in the universe. Yeah, and now we keep talking about how great these characters are and it's by far the best part of the show. Now, we want to give you a little rundown of the main characters of the show. So the show follows nine main characters. They're all unique and amazing in their own right. Now we're gonna tell you a little bit about them in no particular order. So, starting things off, we got my boy, Malcolm. Now, Malcolm is the captain of the ship. He is an ex-soldier of the brown coats, which is the resistance, the losing side. He's a charming but damaged leader and he's the main character of the show. And I, I have to tell you, after watching Firefly, I loved Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion is such a great actor. Absolutely, and I think personally, you know, Malcolm brings this, this new kind of character. He is so blind to his team that he will protect them no matter what. Mm -hmm. He has absolute loyalty to them, no matter what they do in the show. And they'll, they'll get in arguments and they get in fights and that, you know, there's physical violence sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yet, Malcolm will hands down put his life on the line for any one of his crew members. And I think that shows that, you know, while he's a little damaged, he still has his morals that he abides by. Yeah. He's, he's one of those really, like, kind but hardcore people, you know? Yeah. He's gruff, but he's soft on the inside. Yeah. So, up next, I'd like to talk about Zoe. Now, Zoe is Malcolm's right hand, and Zoe was also a brown coat who fought alongside Malcolm in probably the most damaging battle of the war, which was the Battle of Serenity, which inspired the crew's ship name. They, they have a Firefly-class ship, and that was why the show is called Firefly, and they fly it, and it's called the Serenity, and Zoe participated with Malcolm in that main battle. True, and she's a great, you know, female, strong female character that kind of balances oh, yeah. out Malcolm and kind of she she rain checks him. Oh, she yeah. keeps she keeps Malcolm from going off the rails at times in the show. And there's this good companionship between them that shows, you know, they have a history together, but it doesn't become the central plot line. Yeah, and Zoe in the show is married to our up next character, who's named Wash. Now, Wash is the funny guy of the ship. He is also a very nice person, but he has a strong moral compass as well. He, you could say that he's kind of similar to Malcolm in the fact that he can also fly the ship. Yeah, I would say that Wash is one of the sweeter people on the ship. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's very heart-centered, and he really brings this compassion to the crew and helps kind of keep things from boiling over. You know, yeah. he's, he keep, he's the lid on the pot. Now, one thing I want to address about Wash is the fact that he's played by an actor named Alan Tudyk, and uh, you probably know him as he is both K2SO in Star Wars Rogue One, uh, he's Hey Hey in Moana, he's the Duke of Weaselton in Frozen, he's Duke Weaselton in Zootopia, he's all of these beloved voices of these characters that I've grown up watching, and it's just great to see, like, that's his face. This is the guy. Oh yeah, and he definitely adds some comedic relief into the show when it's necessary. Because this yeah. isn't, it isn't a light, airy show. It's dark. You know, this is, is this a sci-fi western by, you know, genre, but it, there's drama. Like, it's, it's soap-like. You know, when you said dark, I was so happy that the guy who I'm about to talk about next is coming up. Now, the hero of Canton, the man they call Jane. Jane is the hardcore weapons specialist and kind of just straight up meanest person in the crew. Uh, he doesn't take anyone's, mm, you know, but Jane has also proven himself as a fairly loyal person except for a few moments where there's some pretty disgraceful things. There's some pretty disgraceful things. True, but I mean, <laughs> it, the bottom line is that Jane is the muscle. Oh yeah. Like if we were to put him in in one slot for this crew, he's the muscle. He keeps everyone safe, and that's the bottom line. He's not known for his brains. In no, in no way, shape, or form is Jane known for being the smart guy. No, he's definitely <laughs> like, the hothead of the group. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have the nicest person of the crew, uh, Kaylee. Kaylee is the mechanic, and Kaylee is the kind of one who is probably the one that I would want to hang out with the most because Kaylee's not gonna shoot me. Yeah, I would agree with you with that. Um, Kaylee is a total sweetheart, and you know she, they introduce her so strangely. It's just like, oh yeah, hi, I'm here, I'm Kaylee, and 
she's she's so young to be in this situation as well. It's like how they explain it is just mechanically that she just gets it. Like she just she talks with the ship and she's just she's one with that engine bay. She knows it. What's what's fun for talking about Kaylee is the fact that if she's not there inside the ship, a lot of the time things will go wrong. Oh, very wrong, like sideways. Yeah. So up next, we have another leading gal, Anara. Now Anara is a companion, and Anara is that kind of companion. So uh, she's also really complicated, and her and Malcolm have a kind of shaky relationship at times. Uh, where they both really like each other, but they're not like willing to commit to anything And it's pretty interesting to watch that throughout the show Yeah, she really is a woman of mystery and she brings this kind of intrigue at me it, It's it's very complimentary to Malcolm. It makes you want to know everything about that relationship It makes mm. you want to keep watching it for those little tidbits mm. that are in there because they give you just little Tidbits to try and create this story and then in the movie, you know, they explain a lot more of it. Yeah another member of this crew is Shepard. Now, Shepard is a very nice Christian man, and Shepard is kind of that kind of introduction. He's like the walk-in. He in, in the pilot, he's like the walk-in. Uh, and Shepard himself uh, is totally not an agent. He's, he's not one. Don't question me on that. He's totally not an agent. Totally not. <laughs> so, up next, moving on, we got Simon. Now, Simon is a doctor, and he is the overall medic of the group. He keeps everyone alive, and that keeps him alive. Malcolm and Simon don't exactly get along, but they tolerate one another. Yeah, would you say they tolerate one another? Uh, well enough. I mean, their first interaction is Simon's picked up on this outer planet after a deal just went badly, and there's tensions running really high, and so Malcolm, of course, wrongly accuses Simon of being an agent and having contacted the Federation on them mm -hmm. and punches him in the face. So that's the start of their relationship. So I wouldn't say it went well, but they make up after that. It's, it's not the best of starts, but one thing to say about Simon is that he will go to extreme lengths to take care of his family, and especially his sister, River. Oh yes, look at that segue. Now, River was... A a snuck aboard by Simon onto the ship, which is partially why he accused him, because he had some pretty interesting cargo that he didn't want anyone to see. So she's really weird, but she's like the cool kind of weird, because she has some pretty awesome moments throughout the show, and I'll just have to summarize it here, but you're gonna have to watch it for yourself in order to find out what the heck I'm talking about, because it's awesome. It, it <laughs> truly is awesome to see this story unfold, and you know, of course, it's just like the relationship between Malcolm and um, Sephora. Wow. Inara. Inara. My apology. <laughs> Is that it's shrouded with, with mystery and there's intrigue that's, that's there. Yeah. And it makes you want to know more and more about the character and the way that it's written. It just uncovers just enough to keep you keep you interested. And that's the thing about these characters is that it's super fun to watch them all interact with each other because they're all super different. Like everyone on this crew is super unique. Oh, absolutely. And it's awesome to see like how Jane interacts with River in those few times. That's it's pretty interesting. But yeah, uh, now that we've kind of covered a basis of who all the people are, Jacob, I have a question for you. Who is your favorite crew I mean, member? <laughs> yeah, Malcolm, of course, is predominant in this but I don't think he's my favorite. I really like him as a leader, and he he has these great character flaws that really make him relatable, but I think Kaylee's probably my favorite. Kaylee's your favorite? Because she's so sweet, she's mm. always there, and she just has this innocence and this naive attitude towards things sometimes, and I can relate to that, as sometimes I can be naive about things, and you know, she's so, so kind and relatable. So you're definitely leaning towards the nice side of the field. Absolutely. I'm definitely the, the nice side of things. I try not to uh, tussle with anyone or to get into toughs. Now, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you for a whirl. It's all about the hero of Canton, the man they call Jane. Jane is so hardcore, and I love it. He just has so many different types of cool weapons, like Vera. Vera, his assault rifle, it's like the coolest thing ever. It's like a specialized modified weapon. And uh, you can probably... It's, it's, you can probably tell I like that gun a lot because I'm super hyped about it, but Jane is just super fun. Like, okay, the, the more testament to Jane. Nothing, add the nothing, carry the nothing. <laughs> like that, that oh, scene. I mean, oh my be gosh. beautifully crafted and, and perfectly showcases in the pilot mm -hmm. who Jane is and yeah. his character throughout this. 
the, uh, the, I, the series. I love Jane just for the fact that he doesn't even know that he's being like awesome at times. He's just like, oh, well, I might live like yeah, no one else just, does. It, it's just who he is. He's so self-absorbed. I love it. Yeah. So anyways, that's kind of the characters and everyone. Now, I highly recommend that you go out and watch it to make your own decision who you like the best. But now you know what we think about it. So we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to be talking movies and games. So stick around. I joined Orange Bee Network as a freshman. It was my second week of being a freshman here, and I was looking for an opportunity to get involved in something on campus, and I had done a little bit of high school journalism, not a lot, but I came up here to the fourth floor, I saw the TV studios, I saw the radio booth, I saw all the computers, and I thought, this is super cool. This is something I want to get involved in. And I joined the Barometer team as a freshman. I learned so many things that I would have never learned in a classroom. Not only did I learn how to do journalism, how to design a newspaper, how to produce a TV show, I learned skills on top of that that are definitely going to help me in whatever I go do with my life. These past four years, OMN has meant to me to be a place where I can come and be myself, where I can come and challenge myself, push myself, learn and grow. It's a place where you come up here and you think you know who you are, you think you know the type of leader that you are, the type of person that you are, but you'll look back as a graduating senior four years later and think, wow, I am not the same person as I was when I stepped on this floor the very first time as a freshman. My name is Lauren Sless. I am the producer of Spotlight at KDVR-TV at Orange Media Network. Located on your airwaves, outside your classrooms, and on the fourth floor of the Student Experience Center, Orange Media Network is home to Oregon State University's national award-winning student media organization. Hundreds of OSU students from all majors and experience levels create content and make content decisions for seven media platforms including a newspaper, three magazines, a radio station, a TV station, and online. OMN students strive to change the world by elevating diverse student voices, challenging views, and empowering the community to build a better world. Welcome back. Now, the movie is the final piece of the Firefly story, and it couldn't have been better. It really couldn't have been. I mean, it truly gives a conclusion to this whole story arc. Mm -hmm. And... It has this melancholy feel throughout the entire movie. Even through the moments that you're laughing, there's this underlying sadness that you feel because you know the story's wrapping up, but it's so well put together that you love these characters. You want to continue being around these characters because when you watch it, you're so immersed in the film. And the thing about the movie is that it really starts adding in more detail into the show. One of the main villains of the show is uh, kind of a thing called the Reavers. Now, the Reavers are like these psychotic people. And you're watching the show and just wondering, why are these guys like this? And Serenity, the name of the movie, it dives into their origins and why the Reavers even exist in the first place. True, and I think, I think part of what makes this film so strong and what makes it beautiful is the fact that the fans requested this. Mm -hmm. This wasn't like an afterthought of, you know, hey, the show's done, let's make a movie. It was, the show's done, it's been a few years, the fans are demanding a movie. So, let's make the movie, let's make this happen. And I think that brings, you know, it shows an appreciation to the fans, right? It's not just, oh, we want more money from you, it's, we want this. We want more from you. It's really a testament to the fans that the fact that they got this thing alive, because as we previously discussed, the, the show was canceled after nine episodes. Now, like, you don't think that a show like that will ever get a movie, no. but it was so well put together that people were just like, yeah, we need more of this. We, we can't just wait around and just, like not get anything else from this. And it was timed at a time that felt right, you know? It, it really goes into it, and it, you pick up where the show left off just a few moments later. True, and it's not, this, it's not a lousy reboot that finishes telling you what you already know. Mm -hmm. It expects that you have seen the season that aired a lot, right? Or the box set or, or whatever streaming service is on. And then it gives you 
the before and the after. And it really tells a full story. And it makes you feel satisfied with what you know. And another factor of the movie is that you get to watch these characters go through traumatic experiences one last time. And oh man, oh, it's a few times in that movie that it just drags you through the mud. But I'm not going to spoil anything. True. There are some great fight scenes, and the graphics are really well done as well. I mean, that just, I think that just shows how good the movie is. So, Firefly, after the movie, also got its fair share of games that spawned out of it. And a lot of these games are actually quite enjoyable. There's, they got like three. Yeah, so we decided to take some time and give you a rundown of the board game because it's a lot of fun to play. Hey guys, welcome to Firefly the Game. As you can see, it's a pretty big game. So we're going to show you what we can in the short time constraint we have. Now, this game takes about six hours to play, so we're going to do our best. Each player has a ship represented by a colored piece and their ship board. On their ship board, it has their cargo hold, their secret stash, their ship upgrades, and their crew. In that crew, you have a captain card. This captain card is the basis of what your team is going to be good at and have different abilities based on that. Each captain also has a special ability which can come in handy in certain situations. You can expand your crew by flying around the verse and going to one of the many upgrade shops. So the core concept of the game is for each player to fly around the verse and collect cash. Generally, the player with the most cash at the end of the game is the winner, unless you're playing with one of the special scenario cards, which we won't get into. Now, the way you earn cash varies from time to time. Most of the time, you can go around to different contacts and complete missions that earn you cash. Or you can opt to just move some cargo and some passengers. And if you're feeling a little bit risky today, you can always try moving that contraband and fugitives. Although, if you get caught, you might lose everything. High risk, high reward. We mentioned upgrade shops, so here's the down low. You can hire new crew members to work on your ship, as well as buy ship improvements to give you that edge over your opponents in your chosen line of work. Now, don't forget those weapons and equipment upgrades. They'll help your crew be the best at what they do. My favorite's Vera. Given that movement is one of the most important game mechanics, it's crucial that we go over it here. Now, there are two different types of movements that you can make in this game. One, you can mosey. If you do, you move one space and you don't attract any attention. The other option is you can full burn. When you do a full burn, you expend one of your fuel tokens. With that, you can move a distance equal to the number of spaces on your drive core. The default is five. Now, with each space you move, you draw an event card. Now, most of the time, nothing happens, but every once in a while, there's a nice little card that has your name on it. Some of these event cards have challenges on them. For most of these challenges, you'll need to pass a skills test. To see if you pass the skills test, you look at all of your cards and you take those icons of that type. Then, you roll a dice. If the total number exceeds the challenge number, you pass the test and gain a reward. If not, consequences occur. Now, like we said, this is a big game and we can't exactly cover everything, but I hope this was helpful and it gives you a rough idea. And for all those diehard Firefly fans out there, yes, you can make the entire crew of the Serenity with a few special cards. I can't resist. I do it every time. And that about wraps us up. So with that, back to the studio. Well, that is all for tonight's episode. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you tune in next week as we talk about another topic. Also, check out more content by KBVR TV, and check out our YouTube page, where all the full episodes will be posted afterwards. If you want to keep up with the show and the rest of KBVR TV's awesome productions, you should also check out the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages, where we post constant updates and tons of extra content. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye.